advice this evening on how to deal with President Cyril Ramaphosa's response to allegations related to the misuse of public funds for party purposes. In his written response to the committee, Ramaphosa largely denied any first-hand knowledge of this. He says comments he made in a leaked recording were in reference to information already circulating in the public domain. Well, let's go live now to ENCA's Lindsay Dentlinger, who's building up to that hearing by the Standing Committee on Public Accounts. And Lindsay, um, you've gotten a glimpse or you've got a sense, uh, let me put it that way, of what the legal team of Parliament is likely to tell Scopa a bit later on. What can we expect there? Yes, Tulis, let me just take you back. So when um, Scopa received that letter from the president last week, it, um, the committee referred it to Parliament's legal team uh, as to how to process, uh, as you've mentioned there, largely the president responding to those questions, saying that he didn't have any first-hand information and he couldn't add any more uh, to this um, discussion and to this debate. Uh, and so um, Scopa taking advice from their legal team as to what to do next, and that is what they do to discuss this evening um, but I have it on good authority that they are going to be advised uh, in light of the president's responses to turn their attention to the state security agency. We know that a number of former ministers and other principals and officials uh, have already testified before the Zondo Commission of Inquiry on this very subject. And so Parliament's legal advisers, um, I'm told, have been uh, advising, will advise um, the Standing Committee on Public Accounts to wait for the Zondo Commission uh, of inquiry to release their third report, which we are due at the end of this month, so that there is no duplication, then go through that testimony uh, that was uh, given again and decide from there whether they then call former state security ministers to the Standing Committee on Public Accounts uh, to provide further information um, and uh, also uh, a suggestion that they look to call the Auditor General to explain how difficult it is um, to audit the financial statements of the State Security Agency and why then perhaps uh, the trace of the money from um, state coffers to the ANC to be used for party political activity um, has uh, not been picked up um, up until now. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a difficult conversation, and it's not a new one. The whole issue of um, the ability or otherwise to fully audit the finances of the state security agency, what with the veil of secrecy that's uh, surrounded and shrouded uh, the operations of the SSA for such a long time. What's our sense then, Lindsay, uh, of the likelihood of this advice of waiting for the third installment of the Zondo Commission report, as well as possibly summoning these various officials about the finances of the SSA, uh, the likelihood of that advice being heeded by SCOPA. So just for, to your first point, uh, Tulas, uh, as you know, the uh, committees uh, that deal with intelligence and the legislature, those are also cl closed and private meetings. Uh, and it's my understanding that Parliament's legal advisers may be suggesting to uh, SCOPA that uh, should they decide to call these intelligence um, uh, officials, they could also uh, you know, apply to the presiding officers to hold um, such meetings to get to the bottom of this in secret. So all round uh, these um, secret meetings, very difficult uh, to to ascertain you know this flow of money but just in terms of what the opposition parties how they might respond to this advice this evening uh, I maybe get the sense that um, not everybody is going to be happy certainly from the opposition benches just to let the president off the hook as it were um, because I would think that they would question why if he claims to know something even though he doesn't have details why as the leader of the ANC is he then not questioning and probing um, this uh, illicit transfer of funds. Uh, what has he done uh, to try to prevent it or to get to the bottom of it or to investigate it? So I'm not quite sure that the opposition parties are going to agree that given these responses uh, from the president just to let him go and now just to uh, shift focus. Um, I would think that uh, some of them might still suggest uh, that the president does appear in person to come and give them those responses or maybe to answer additional questions. Uh, but I 
I suppose we can expect some le level of protection from the ANC uh, itself to say, well, let's just leave it here and let's do what Parliament's legal advisers say and turn our attention to the State Security Agency because, as we know, the ANC MP who uh, petitioned this committee in the first place to investigate these claims uh, is um, on suspension and has lost his seat on this very committee for deigning to uh, bring the, his party uh, president you know, into this kind of um, uh, um, situation and to uh, suggest that he come and answer to Parliament on this matter. So um, we will have to wait and see that meeting only scheduled to happen this evening. Um, but as I say, I'm not quite sure that everybody's going to agree just to let mm. the matter rest there and move on. Yeah, the sense perhaps it could the, the sense perhaps could be that um, some in that committee may not be entirely happy with the response that says, you know, I was merely uh, making reference to what's already being rumoured, the abuse of public funds and what's already in the public domain. Particularly, Lindsay, if we rewind back to that uh, leaked audio recording. There are words such as we all know, and then there's this commitment as well by the president uh, that says, I would rather be the one who's under pressure for accepting money from white monopoly capital than for the public to find out what actually happens with public monies. That, I suspect, and I, I think you are right, uh, may not be easy uh, for some members of that committee to say, let's let it slide. He has answered the question. Indeed, uh, Tulas, and he also says in that leaked recording that um, he would, as you said, rather fall on the sword and for people to believe that it's only the CR17 campaign that may have used public funds. And he also says for the public to finally find out that yeah. their money is being used for uh, um, party campaigning. So um, those, um, those utterances, I would uh, expect members of the opposition to say, well, as the leader of the party, uh, what were you doing uh, to, to see to it that this wasn't happening or what were you doing to remedy it, uh, you know, just to make those remarks. Uh, I think they would uh, expect the president in his capacity as the ANC president to provide some kind of answers as to uh, what, what kind of leadership he was um, providing uh, to, uh, to stop that from happening. All right. Thank you for that. Of course, from his side, he says these were taken out of context, uh, the, this particular snippet uh, that has been leaked. ENCA's Lindsay Dentlinger setting the stage there for us uh, for what's to come a bit later on when the Standing Committee on Public Accounts is set to get legal advice on how to proceed now that President Ramaphosa has responded to them in writing regarding that leaked audio rec uh, recording uh, that came through talking about the abuse of public funds within the ANC. Way before then, of course, the president will be answering. Uh, the, in the next hour, President Ramaphosa will be responding to the debate by members of parliament on the State of the Nation address uh, that he delivered last week. Well, on that, 